The opening of the yellow ligament can be done uh, with the sharp scissors. The mouth of the sharp scissors is opened widely and gently and it's being pushed against the yellow ligament. This should be done perpendicular to the fibers of the yellow ligament simply because then you can cut better, you can take better bites. And at the same time, you can also use the bipolar in order to shrink some of the surrounding soft tissues and that will provide you with a better visualization. This step using the scissors uh, is repeated several times until the yellow ligament is gradually thinned out and until you can carefully go through the last and final layer of the yellow ligament. And this then will open the access into the spinal canal. You will confirm this and you will see this uh, by being able now to see the epidural fat tissue which shines somewhat golden. If you feel uncomfortable going this last step cutting through the yellow ligament, which is sometimes tricky for beginners, uh, then what you can also do is that you take the scissors and you basically through this last layer you use them like a dissector and then you can rather go through this last layer of the yellow ligament uh, bluntly. And this, is, uh, this can be done very safely. Whilst you are going through the yellow ligament, it is important that you see the tip of your sharp instruments at all times. And one frequent beginner's mistake is that you basically stand behind your instruments. Then you can only see the back of the instruments, but you can't really see what you are doing with the tip of your sharp instruments. And that's not safe. But there is one simple trick what you can do is you can make use of your 25 degree angled optics. You simply rotate the 25 degree angled optics by 45 to 90 degrees. And this will then give you a perfect visualization of where you are and what you're doing. So that's what I recommend what you do. From here on, you can continue to remove the yellow ligament either with the scissors or you can also use the Kerenson rangers slowly going layer by layer uh, from medially to laterally. This needs to be done until you can confirm that you are lateral of the dura and this is very important, you must be 100% sure that you have identified, that you really have identified the lateral border of the nerve root, not just of the dura, you must have identified the lateral border of the nerve root. This is very important because because of your close proximity to the neural structures, this is basically how you're looking, you're right next to the neural structures, especially beginners may confuse uh, the dura uh, with the nerve root. And that's when, become, when things maybe become a little bit dangerous because when you think that you have identified the nerve, but what you have identified is actually just the dura and uh, that this is when things are not so safe. And then maybe you are running uh, at a risk of accidentally causing an injury to the nerve root, which is still coming laterally. You can distinguish between the two. For comparison, the dura in structure is much softer. Uh, the dura uh, often shows pulsations and it may also be slightly pushed aside by the irrigation system almost like a like a sail in the wind for anybody who goes sailing you know it's like a sail in the wind you don't have that with a nerve root in contrast the nerve root is much stronger it's much more rigid in structure and it's in comparison almost like a cable so please make sure that you have identified the nerve and uh, that you uh, safely identify the nerve root before continuing your discectomy or sacrostrectomy. This is very important for the safety of your surgery. When you are new to the endoscopic technique, there is one more tip that I would like to give you, uh, which is that you make your entrance into the spinal canal rather medially. And once you have done so, then you can continue removing your the yellow ligament layer by layer in the lateral direction. This will be much easier and it's also much safer as when you do this, then you're taking your bites, your bites away from the dura rather than having to bite 
towards the dura, in the direction of the dura, and then you have a little bit of a higher risk of accidentally injuring the dura also. Later on in your learning curve, and when you want to target one disc herniation or a sequester, in the majority of cases, you can actually just create a really tiny, maybe only two, three millimeter hole in the yellow ligament, just enough uh, to get into the spinal canal and right over the disc herniation. This is also part of our very focused MIS target surgery. It's not just a small skin incision, but we also want to make small incisions into the yellow ligament. And in those cases, then, if you have a recurrent disc herniation, for example, then you have all of the yellow ligament, all, the, all of the remaining yellow ligament is still in place, which will have prevented in the meantime any possible scarring, and then which will make it also much easier for you in case you have a revision surgery. But as said in the beginning, maybe rather open the yellow ligament more widely, and then this will simply give you a better overview over the uh, anatomic structures. After the opening of the yellow ligament, you will again see some soft tissues, epidural fat tissue, for example. And again, it is important that you have a full anatomic orientation of the dura, of the nerve, of the recess, and that you can clearly see all the neural structures at all times. And for this purpose, I recommend that you remove these soft tissues, which, which almost look like spider webs. Uh, you can see this in the video, that you remove these spider webs. And you can see here on this video that once you have removed these tissues, that we get a really fantastic picture and a really clear vision of all neural structures and of the intraspinal anatomy. It's not necessary to remove these fat tissues from a decompression point of view. The decompression is done. But it will simply improve your vision very much, which is important for your anatomic orientation and also so that you can safely perform your surgery. So now that we have clearly identified and exposed our neural structures, now we want to remove our disc herniation. At times I see surgeons going in with a sleeve into the spinal canal and then by rotating uh, the working sleeve, uh, to use this working sleeve like a retractor almost, like you can do in microsurgery. And uh, push aside the dura. You can do this maneuver, but to be perfectly honest, I don't really recommend it. And especially for beginners where you are overwhelmed with all kinds of impressions and different anatomy and things look differently and handling your instruments and all kinds of challenges. You may perhaps not notice that accidentally you start compressing the dura or the nerve with the sharp metallic uh, edges of this metallic sleeve, either at four o'clock or at eight o'clock, depending on how you are rotating the sleeve. This maneuver will become even more tricky and more risky at the level L45, where you have much less space laterally. So uh, this is, becomes really a problem when you haven't created much space uh, laterally, for example, with a high-speed burr. All in all, to be perfectly honest, I never need this procedure in any of my surgeries. I never need it, and therefore also I wouldn't recommend it. We are working with highly delicate structures, and basically the less you touch them, the less that you mobilize them, the better. Alternatively, I recommend other tips and tricks to you that you can use instead to remove uh, disc fragments. You may mobilize uh, the nerve or the dura with the back side of your forceps and then carefully pull out the disc fragment. You can also open the mouth of your instrument and then carefully go underneath the nerve root or the neural structures and then pull out any disc fragment uh, that is basically hiding uh, underneath the dura. For larger disc fragments, I recommend that you can do the so-called, let's say, crocodile roll. That's what we have named the baby. So you basically grab the disc herniation and then you rotate around it several times, just a 
crocodile rotates several times uh, around its prey. And this will also uh, help you to get a solid grip of the herniation. And then slowly you can retract this big disc herniation and uh, remove it. Last but not least, please remember that the working channel is again located eccentrically. In case you don't seem to be able to get underneath the nerve root and then what you can do is you simply rotate the endoscope, you advance your instruments, your forceps, and then you rotate the endoscope back, as you can also see in this video. And this will be very helpful and this is an extremely useful tool uh, that you can use in many of your surgeries. In the majority of cases, you will be able to remove disc fragments like the way that we have shown you just now. Some fragments, massive disc herniations, however, they may be so big, so huge, that they basically don't pass through the 4 mm or even 5 mm working channel of your endoscope. In these cases, your assistant uh, should fix the position of the working sleeve on the patient's skin surface. And the inner diameter of this working sleeve is still much bigger than the working channel of your endoscope. And that way, when you remove both the endoscope and the forceps with the disc herniation, you will be able to remove much bigger fragments, as you can see here also. In case you have a sequester that is located in the axilla of the nerve root, you should, in the beginning, still try perhaps to grasp it and mobilize it from lateral of the nerve root simply because it's much easier and maybe you will be able to get a uh, get hold of a lot of these uh, axilla uh, uh, disc herniations also. If this is not possible, however, then you may have to go through the axilla. Uh, it's possible, of course, but just make sure that you have clearly identified all the neural structures, that you see the dura, that you see the nerve, that you see the shoulder of the nerve, that you can see the axilla, and uh, just be aware that getting out uh, one of those disc fragments through the axilla simply may be more challenging to do so and it's maybe not necessarily recommended as a, as a case for beginners, let's say when you're doing your first or maybe 10 cases. Finally, just as one last comment, please remember that we are trying to work as minimally invasive as possible. Perhaps try, if you can, to limit your surgery just to a sequestrectomy, not a more aggressive and advanced discectomy, and if you can, to not go into the disc space wherever you can. That would be that would much reduce the invasiveness of our surgery, and that would be great.